What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel and the Cleveland Browns 0-16 rebuild. My name is Mr. Hurricane and we are coming off one of the most interesting seasons of this rebuild just because we came in with very low expectations and then this team turned into another division winner. Unfortunately, again, we were overmatched in the postseason and could not get our first playoff victory of the series. And I know many of you are really tired of watching the playoff games because we have lost them. I want to talk about some of that stuff during this episode today. But we're getting on with the offseason now, and we're going to build up this roster now. And I think we have a pretty good opportunity this offseason, considering we actually have the money to go make some free agent moves. Usually, we only have like... 10 or 15 million dollars in the funds but now we have close to 40 that is well over what you need to start signing big free agents and to really make a difference on the roster so let's just take a look at our team right now and see what we need to do here in this offseason on offense it certainly wouldn't hurt to find some interior line help and then a right tackle option hopefully someone who is younger and can develop I really like our skill positions we're very good there Ace Harrison is our top running back. We could use some depth. I've tried drafting some players though, and they are low 70 overalls. I'm not going to take a running back super early unless there are some rare circumstances. Let's go to defense now, and I do think we should address edge rusher as our top primary need. I could also consider free safety because Curry Pugh and the slow development have kind of been just kind of stuck here in the high 70s and low 80s. We could definitely use some cornerback help. I don't think Darius Slay is going to be back on the team again. We'll have Francis Goodwin for at least one more season, and we already signed Morris Griffin to a four-year extension. We took care of all our key free agents, so there aren't any major decisions that we have to make right now or any franchise-altering events, at least in this stage. Before we dive right in, I do want to talk about the playoffs and us watching games in this series. I have really enjoyed watching the games for the most part, even though we haven't won a playoff game yet. I think we've had some really fun games that we have sat in on, but I will look to change some things. I know many of you don't want to watch the games really at all. I do like watching a lot of them, just to get some context behind the season and to watch the players make plays. I know that the gameplay isn't perfect, but I do think that it's better than it has been and a lot of times it's at least fun and entertaining. Not all the time, but I think that a lot of the time it has been. The way I look at it, we do it on all pro difficulty, default sliders, no team really has any kind of an advantage. It's just how things end up playing out. I do think there are some things that I can do to make it so maybe it's a little less weird when we get into the game. Maybe sim more the red zone stuff because play calling down there is pretty poor. Uh, I do end up simming a lot of the game anyway, even when we jump in. Like I sim a lot of possessions. And so it's a lot like if we had, you know, simmed regularly. I still sim, you know, probably half the game or more a lot of times. We sat in on four regular season games this year, and we went 2-2 two and two in those games. Offense was really bad in two of them. I think one thing I could do is sim even more of the game, and just kind of watch the play-by-play -play on that screen in Super Sim. That's one option, and then jump in every now and then. But uh, I will listen to your feedback and see what you think. I'll try, you know, a different way during the regular season next year. And then we'll kind of go from there. But I, I saw the feedback on the last episode. And I, I've seen, you know, a lot of feedback about not watching the games. I will, you know, we'll get into the regular season. And then we'll jump into a couple games and see how it goes. And we'll go from there. But let's get to actually handling the roster now. As I'm letting our two defensive tackles go. Arian Wimper and Griffin Victorian. Defensive tackles just want huge contracts in Madden for some reason, and there are a million defensive tackles in this overall space. Brandon McManus, I will look to keep him around. He did a pretty good job this year. Oh, he's going to test. I will not look to bring back Lael Collins at this time, nor Telvin Smith. Those veterans are kind of a last resort if I can't get any other free agents or rookies to play those roles. I will also let Christian Haynes test. He is 27 years old. I did do some development on him this year. 
but 76 overall is not a high priority for me. I do want to bring back Trevante Sanders because in the games that we did sit in on, Sanders was really good. However, $6 million two years, not for a 72 overall, I think I can get him cheaper. We will not look to bring back David Florence now that we have a new backup quarterback in Brian Davenport. I might get a third quarterback, most likely, at some point. So I think the only player I've signed so far is Tank Barksdale, our fullback, who always signs a one-year contract with us. Riley Knott, 78 overall. He's actually pretty good depth, and I'm, I'm okay giving out this deal. Okay, so handling the contracts in season was a good deal for us, and now we can move on to unrestricted free agency. Let's see what opportunities are out there for the Cleveland Browns. And here we go, Allen Robinson, top available. I'm more interested in right here. This is Moses Austin, a 90 overall safety, a free safety of this caliber, okay. I'm intrigued, and I'm sure we have, yeah, we have $72 million in cap room right now. So if we want to make a couple splashes, the opportunities, or at least that one is there. Zach Martin is still going strong, getting these short-term offers. Probably making a lot of cash in this series. He's got to be way up there in earnings. I wish it kept track of that in the player log. He'd be very high. So I don't like the tackle or line options in general besides Zach Martin. Going to be very competitive to get him. The ratings are still pretty good. I wouldn't be against a one-year deal. That's not going to hurt us. Oh, wow. I almost traded for Brandon Davenport. I had no idea he was in the last year of his contract, but that makes sense. He is older than Brian. So I'm glad I made the trade for Brian instead, who still has two years left on his contract. One more than Anton Greenberry. All right, Sanders, let's get you back in Cleveland. We're going to drop this offer down. I want to do two years. I'm cool with that, but I want to do closer to probably three and a half million dollars. All right, Zach Martin, let's make a deal here. Not going to go super high on the signing bonus. I'm not going to a $15 million salary either. This goes up very quickly. But yeah, one year, bring him back. We had him for, I think, two years in this series. We're not going to make that big of an offer. It's actually going to be a lot cheaper than I expected. These are, that's a lot of points, but the deal isn't even that large. We're now nine points over Seattle, and it's simply a one-year, six million dollar offer. There we go, five and a half million dollars gives us four points over Seattle, just in case. Let's up it a little bit more for a few extra points, and let's get Zach Martin back in a Browns uniform. Let's also make this offer here on Moses Austin, or at least attempt to. 124 points is the top offer right now. That's a lot of money for a safety. The baseline offer is a 96 point deal. Wow. I still think it could definitely end up being worth it. I will make this a four year deal. I was gonna try to make it a three, but I think they, they really want you to go with that four year offer. I wish they were more flexible, especially if you offered a lot of money. But I guess I haven't experimented completely with that, but most of my offers that are way off don't get accepted. So, $51 million over four years? That's a lot of money for a safety. That's the highest bid. Not sure if we have to go even heavier here. We're talking about a $12 million signing bonus at the moment, which this year, that's not a big deal. We could hand out a few of those. I'd like to sign a 75 overall linebacker here, Tarquin Overstreet. He's a cover two outside linebacker. Pretty adequate speed, not overpowering, but he does cover pretty well. And I think that he'd be a good addition to our linebacker group, maybe take over for Telvin Smith. But I wanna make this like a, maybe a $2 million offer a year. Behind Gregory Long, we're pretty thin at defensive tackle as Thomas Browning would be our second. He actually has a lot of good ratings here that I like, and he's only 25 years old, but we should still get someone else there, maybe a veteran. Victorian and Wimper are pretty good players. I didn't want to hand out these contracts, and I'm still not convinced that I want to at their overall, although Wimper would be intriguing. He is quick development. 
Maybe there aren't as many D tackles in this range as I thought. They seem to always get paid, so I just thought there would be plenty. I mean, 80 overall isn't like special, but Wimper is 29th in the league, which he'd be a number one then on a lot of teams. So maybe I shouldn't overlook 80 overall defensive tackles as much. He is only 26, has quick development. Maybe I'll actually make an offer here. I didn't think I would before, 92 points. Yeah, we can easily leapfrog that. We have the cap space. We have the funds. We should be in good shape financially moving forward. So let's make it happen. I'm also offering to Tyler Lang here, who was our tight end number three. So that is quite a few contract offers. Not many are high profile free agents, but let's see how the first round goes. Contracts accepted by Arion Wimper, Moses Austin, and Zach Martin. The three best players we offer deals to. So that gives us one of our best safeties we've ever had then in the series. Funds are down to 16 million. I did give out some signing bonuses. We can still sign our rookies and not be in a bad situation. So I'd say that, you know, things went pretty good right here. We can probably add Curry Pew to the trading block here and maybe get something for the 80 overall safety. But that gives us Austin now on a four-year contract with his quick development. And then the now second-year safety, Walker Sharp. Oh, wow. The Chiefs got really aggressive here for Tyler Lang. I'm not sure exactly why, but I guess we're out there. I'll upgrade uh, the offers here, hopefully getting Sanders. Here are the league signings with the Miami Dolphins getting Allen Robinson on a three-year contract, which is a larger contract than he just signed with the Bears. That's pretty funny at 33 years old. And then here are the other big names. Not the most dynamic free agent class, sadly. Now we have combine grades to look at. And my draft board is filled with 49 players so far with points to spend. Still want edge rusher. And there are the draft picks that we have. A first round pick that's going to be toward the bottom, I guess 27th. And then we have two second round picks. I'm thinking that we need to do a package to trade up for the right pass rusher if there's one available. Lane Howmiller is the top player here in the draft. I wouldn't expect to trade up early enough to select a player like him, but that is the kind of talent we're looking for. Khalid Kitchen is probably a defensive tackle for our scheme, and he's going to be really good. Look at all these busts, though. That's not a very good uh, left end class, sadly. At right end, there is Reginald Benjamin, and he had a really good combine, but he's an early first round prospect. And this is a really thin edge rush class, it would appear. I've scouted, you know, all these early prospects, and there's not much to be impressed by. Paul Wells, also an early first round prospect. If we want to make a true difference here, it's going to have to take a very aggressive trade up. It would take our first round pick and likely, obviously our first round pick, but probably both seconds at least. And you can't trade more than three things. So that's the best I could probably do. There is a good mid round prospect here in Malcolm Woodbury. Combine wasn't great, so I don't expect the nicest overall, but we do know he can rush the passer with power. Cornerback is the other priority. Thankfully, we have two that can play well, but we still need a an inside slot corner, and I wasn't a huge fan of this class either. Look at all these low grades at the top. Not many impressive cornerbacks. This is one of those weak classes. He's undrafted talent, but I think I like Howard Darden more than most of these cornerbacks. It didn't appear to be the worst safety class. There are some good cover safeties, but Moses Austin was a special opportunity to go get a 90 overall safety. Late round running back, Jacques Dean. 4-5-4-40, but great vertical and agility. I like running backs. Maybe we target Dean late. Ahead to the next stage, and we have contracts accepted by Overstreet and Sanders. We currently have $16 million in funds, more than enough to sign our rookies, especially if we're not signing as many because I'm trading up. For the offensive line, Andre Nixon, good player. He's an early first-round prospect, like every player that I like in this class. 
There are some guards with high impact blocking. A minus down here, two B pluses toward the top. Christopher Madison, second round talent. I'd have a lot of interest if we still have one of those second round selections. And then at tackle, not the strongest class, but there are some options. Richard Franklin, they say, is a second round talent. So it might be a reach taking him in the first. There are four first round right tackles, but only two that are proficient here at pass blocking. DeMont Cooper, he has a pretty decent combine score though, and really bad run blocking. All right, let's talk about one of my favorite values in this class. I forgot about Dante Morse, a fifth round prospect with a 7.4 combine grade. In this edge rush class, you need a player like this late to save the day. And maybe we can target Dante Morse and end up shoring up our defensive line after all and not need to trade up for a player that has similar talents. And now the last stage of scouting. So we have an edge rush option late. Maybe take him third, fourth round, play it safe there. What do we do then with our early selections if we're counting on that? Maybe I could then target a, an offensive lineman in the first round. What about corner early on? Nah, these aren't first round talents to me. That'd be a, a reach in my book. There we go. How about a fourth round center with B at least across the border, B minus with a great combine grade. There you go, a defensive tackle potentially for us with B power move and B block shed. Starting to find some value here with our last points. Oh wow, B plus power move for Frederick Avery. Might not have the highest overall, but he's gonna be 21. I have a lot of interest. Welcome to prime time in the NFL draft. Let's check on some stories first and maybe check on players that could have great development. Draft stories, we have 12 of them. And most of these players are not players I'm really targeting right now. So we're not getting much help here from these draft stories. I wish that you didn't have to travel through so many menus to see the draft stories. Just throw them in the draft board. Just make it easy to access. Anyway, let's go to not free agent offers. We're done there. Free agency is over. We'll sign some players later on. Let's get to the draft. See if we can go get us an edge rusher. Some... Another member of the front seven at least to uh, either start or be good depth and hopefully some offensive linemen. But we're gonna skip obviously the first handful of picks because it just takes too much to trade up. And the running back goes number one. Awesome, that's what's happening here in the 2025 off season. Then it's an outside linebacker to Green Bay followed by a tackle to the Vikings. Patriots end up going linebacker and the Jaguars go right end. Bradford Kondo, maybe he slides a little bit, but high impact, good pass. I might be able to take him if he falls, but I don't think I'd trade up for him. DeMont Cooper is another option, but I'm really worried about that C- minus run block and that holding back his overall. Same thing here with Margarito Mendoza. I wish there were more complete offensive line prospects in Madden. I think my favorite target early is like Reed Jackson. Combine was good, his top three is rock solid. There aren't a lot of first rounders here that I realistically think will be there and that I actually want to take. Let's sim some more selections then as the Bengals go with Howe Miller. I think that he's gonna end up being really good. We'll check on some ratings when we're done, of course. And to wrap up the top 10, it's a corner. We had another running back go early and then a safety. So there are a couple early first round prospects that are sliding and there goes Kitchen. Kitchen is really good. Remember we picked down here at 27. It would still be very steep to move up this far. Kitchen goes, then Molds, then the Giants go Kondo, the left tackle, tight end. Yes, send all the tight ends and quarterbacks off the board now because I'm not taking one. Yes, we're getting closer to our selection. There's a chance Curtis Green is actually decent, but the coverages will need a lot of work early on. I'm surprised that his talent is holding up with the projection. So I, I'm a little intrigued there, but I think it would be a risk. 
I know I prioritize pass block, but I think I'd have to go with a player like Jamal Copels over most of these tackles because the impact is high, the run is high, and he's 21. I think there's a better chance that he has good development, plus I would only have to get pass block up to actually be respectable here. So Copels might be my target right now, and he is a late first rounder. There goes a tackle to the Bills, not the one that I wanted. Now, Pittsburgh, they're going subtle. Okay, subtle is really good. He certainly would have been worth it, but linebacker's not a priority of mine right now. There goes Jackson, then Green. I want to know how good Green is. I thought a lot about him. Carolina's going to go Little, and Dallas goes Terry, leaving us here at 27. No movement from the Browns, and we could go get... Our tackle, Jamal Copels. I think that's the best selection that we can make here. Copels, it is. And we get 77 overall. A little bit of a, a reach in terms of the value. 89 strength, though. 87 impact give you a foundation with good run. Pass block needs work. We'll make him a focus player and get that up as soon as possible. But we have a good tackle here. Happy with it. We're not quite to our selection. I'm just taking a look at what is left. 32 players on our board. How about players here in the second round? We're not going to go tackle again, so Cooper and Mendoza, no longer priorities. Not going to go quarterback here. I wouldn't expect to, but wow, Preston Tant. Great throw power and short accuracy. It's intriguing, but I think he's about to go. I'm not trading up for a quarterback. We could go with another interior offensive lineman. Christensen and Kreese are here. Christensen's a third round prospect, and I think that's underrating him. But yeah, these second round picks usually aren't my favorite. Second round talent in Madden drafts are probably about as good as fourth round talent, honestly. Maybe the fourth rounds are better. They have steals, at least. There goes Cooper to Philly. Let's get down to our selection here and maybe trade out of our first pick. Very close here at 57. Now we have back-to-back -back picks, and I can't believe it, but I think Preston Tant is still there. He's an early second. You know, we know he has elite short accuracy, and he's 22. Now I don't think I can pass it up. We didn't have to trade up to have a chance at taking him. That is pretty interesting. And if you look at my draft board, second round picks, there is only one. Yep, we're going with it. Preston Tant, 77 overall. Great throw power, great short accuracy, and the medium and deep, while they need some work, you know, they're doable. So, okay. Potential quarterback of the future option. Maybe we can make something happen. And we pick right here again at 59. This one, there's a good chance I trade out of. I like... A lot of these later prospects more. Again, I need to find a way to draft Jerron Tanico from Pittsburgh. He's going to play defensive tackle if we can get him. Reed Christensen is available, though. That's a hard one to pass on. He's an early third, and we're picking late second right now. Then there's Malcolm Woodbury, Dante Morse. We still have our third and our fourth and our fifth, two fives. I'd be willing to give up future capital to have a chance to get some of these late steals. I think there are enough good interior offensive linemen here like Adrian Barton, who had a fantastic combine and is only 22 years old, that while I do like the center here, Reed Christensen, maybe I don't need to take him right now. We could fall to 75 and pick up Oakland's fourth round selection. And 75, it, it is quite a fall. So all of these picks would require us to fall a fair amount of picks down. Washington wants to give up a future two. That's tempting, but that falls to 85. Oh, here. This is just falling down to 62 and picking up a fourth from New Orleans. I'm good with that one for sure. That's very little to give up. So let's just go down, they go for Cruz, we get that fourth round selection, and now we could still take the center if I wanted to. 
So B's across the board for 24-year-old Christensen. And then there is Barton, who also has at least B minus. Yeah, Barton's just a better player. I wish it was easier to compare prospects. They should have a menu for that in the future that allows you to compare side by side very quickly. But yeah, Barton's a better player, easily. I want to address corner, but I just don't see the best opportunities. I like Pittman and Green here, but they're not even the third round talents they were supposed to be. Maybe they are around later on. I'm not sure there's a pick I really want to make at this spot. We could fall from 62 to 72 and get a fifth. That is a decent offer. I also like this one from Tampa Bay. We'd fall down to 77 and get their fourth rounder. That is probably a little bit better value. So we'll go with that. I'm not crazy about this spot right now in the draft. I'll just get some more mid-round value. They wanted Christensen. I think he'll be pretty good, but I still think we have better options. And now we have some more mid-round selections to go and find some of these values. We pick right now at pick 77. We have two thirds and three fours and two fives. We're actually gonna deal this pick to Carolina and pick up the second round pick next year and a fifth this year. So we're continuing to stockpile these later picks in this class and we'll just work our way down and start making picks with our next selection. Just going through my favorite players, most of them are like fifth rounders and there were a couple fours, but we still have our third round pick right here in a couple selections and this is where we'll begin to maybe build up a new core of players. So we're going to start right here by going with the center option and that is Adrian Barton who had an outstanding combine, good athlete and the best Bench press with nothing below a B minus here in the top three. Barton, quick development, number 60 in true talent. There is a potential center or guard for the future. Malcolm Woodbury went off the board, but he wasn't my top priority in this spot. I liked him, but there were better edge rushers. The draft board now has 19 players, and we still have eight picks to make. Three in the fourth, three in the fifth. So let's go now and find out our next best option. Okay, so now we have three picks in the fourth, three picks in the fifth. Tanico is one of my favorite players. He's a defensive tackle. And then Dante Morse, who's a late fifth. I'm taking Morse now because if we lose out on Morse, if anything were to happen, anything crazy, that is the bigger deal. That is the bigger loss. Dante Morse it is, 48 in true talent. And I really like his skills. Quick dev, 75 overall. Let's make sure I actually develop this pass rusher, unlike many that have gone through this series. Lots of traits. Pretty complete skill set, too, for a rookie. Still left with 13 players on our draft board. And from here, we can definitely go draft Jerron Tanico now, the mid fifth round prospect. Tanico has quick development. 56 overall in true talent and he has excellent block shed and power moves so maybe we didn't need Arion Wimper Wimper is still better and has quick development as well but now we get a little deeper I'm not done yet with the offensive lineman but I have to decide which I like more Holland or Chung Holland is 22 combine only a 5.2 good combine here on Chung who's a year older Difference is Holland has better impact block and run block, but Chung has better pass block. I'm going to go with, I think, the better combine grade because things like speed, agility, and strength are almost impossible to upgrade. Let's go Joseph Chung, 30th in true talent, 90 strength, pretty good traits across the board. Hopefully soon we can stop handing out these one-year contracts to offensive linemen and just have our own young talent. All right, Crosby Fazande keeps falling down the board. He's better than projected. Let's take a running back here. Crosby is 86 in true talent, a 68 overall. We already have some power backs. I was hoping maybe he would stand out a little bit, but maybe he's better than the options that we have. We have six players left on our draft board, and this time we're going to go draft Marquise Barnes, 
who's a safety with great strength, hit power, and tackling ability. And he is a 71 overall. Nice speed and cover combo. Not bad for a late round selection. I'm going with Samuel Franklin now, who is a left end, who I'd play at defensive tackle. And I think we just keep getting deeper now. This is a good draft to build depth. Franklin, very strong, good tackler. Run stopping is his specialty. Last player on my board is Alexander Torres. I did want an off-ball linebacker, and we get one here. Torres, decent speed. I like the hit power. And in coverage, I'm not expecting a lot, and there isn't a lot there. And we'll just look to trade out of this last pick because there isn't anybody that I even have uh, on my board anymore. There are only two players I ever even scouted. So we'll just get out of here now and end the draft. But I think that we got a lot of good players here. We were able to get a lot of value and shore up a lot of our needs. So good draft for us. We also go in and get a luxury, which is another backup quarterback in Preston Tant that gives us two options now if we ever move on from Anton Greenberry. We did not get an 80 overall in this class, but we do have a lot of mid to high 70 overalls. Jamal Copels will probably start right away at right tackle. Spencer Chase over on the left side. We now have some interior offensive linemen that I think can keep us from having to pay free agents any big contracts. And we weren't able to go corner because this was a very poor cornerback class. I may have to sign the best available free agent. Reed Christensen, I considered drafting him, and he would have been a very solid selection, 77 overall, normal development, compared to who we actually took, that was Barton. Barton has quick development, he's younger, and I think he's a better player. Overall, is a little bit smaller, but that's going to be temporary. So I missed on Jacques Dean, I took the wrong running back late. Wow, 22 years old with quick development and 77 overall. I think I just kind of forgot about him. All right, Curtis Green went to the Dolphins, and oh, it's 21 with slow development. I'm glad we didn't go that route, although he might have been able to help us out in the short term. DeMont Cooper, only a 73 overall, but he does have good development. Unfortunately, strength is hard to make better, and that's pretty low at 80. Here's the number one overall pick, Devontae Cook from Miami. Maybe it's Dalvin Cook's brother, number 33. Dalvin wore that with the Vikings. Miami, Florida State, not that far away. But Devontae Cook, 89 speed, 84 vision. The moves are a little underwhelming, but superstar development. Trying to see what makes him really stand out here. The speed isn't overpowering. The trucking is all right. Elusiveness is pretty decent. Should still probably be a good player, but... I've seen better, especially at number one. Khalid Kitchen, he fell down the board, and that strength is a problem. He's only 24. I still like that block shed and power move, but maybe he won't become a high overall. Malcolm Woodbury, only a 68 overall. Okay, not as good as I had initially thought. He definitely wouldn't have been a starting caliber player then. The Steelers took Larvery Subtle. And I was sure that he'd be a great option. And yeah, it would have been nice to take a player like him, but we had so many needs I couldn't prioritize him. But yeah, they got a great inside linebacker. Really talented. And let's just go through our division rivals. Always nice to see the overalls they bring in. Lane Howmiller, that's right. Oh man, 89 power move, 82 block shed. He's going to be a problem. They also go and get a quarterback in the second round who has quick development. Not a bad pick here. Lawrence Christick. Then Christian Barr was a player that was on my board. 73 overall safety. All right, Bengals, you made some moves. How about the Baltimore Ravens? They start out only three picks. Okay. Lee Gilded from Wisconsin. Slow dev, strong defensive tackle. All right. And then two high 60 overall players. And then the Steelers overall, after Subtle, went with a bunch of 60s as well. And a 72 corner late. I actually would have liked to have gotten a player like that. I'm worried about that slot position for us right now. But let's get on to the regular season. 
and see what the situation is. First off, we have trade offers here for Curry Pugh. If I could get a cornerback, that'd be excellent. Chances of them offering one are slim. I'll see if I can go make a deal on the trade block. The best on the block appears to be Hamid Kemp. There's also Bryant Hicks, who is 28. I want to go with the younger corner. Craig Crockett is there. But Kemp at least has 81 man, 90 speed, and can still develop a little bit. So I'd be cool doing a swap here, just straight up. Let's go Kemp for Curry Pew. I think it's a fair deal, and they don't like it. What about Thomas Browning? He's a 78 overall. He's your top need, defensive tackle. Why don't you have more interest? You have even less. I still want Kemp. I went through the teams. He's my favorite option here. He's still pretty young. So maybe we have to throw in a selection with Curry Pugh. Give them a better deal. But at least we'll end up with a better cornerback. Pugh and a five got it done. So that helps us out at nickel corner tremendously. We didn't need Curry Pugh any longer. And now we're on to the preseason. Because of all our new added depth and Thomas Browning already playing for a few years, we'll put him on the trade block to try getting something for him. I also forgot that we got turned down by our kicker last year, so now I have to see who the best available is. I forgot all about that. We can... Oh, this is tough. Mike Lyle, 87 kick power. What do we have for high kick power here? Zane Gonzalez... Maybe we have to go like Nick Rose here. I think for simulation purposes, you want to have a higher overall. I will go... Let's just go with Cat and Zero then. One million dollars. We do need another tight end now, so I'll sign Tavares Russell, who has okay speed. He's kind of okay at everything. I'm setting the depth chart now for this season, and Rashawn Merriman is an 80 overall at outside linebacker. I think he could actually play either spot, whether it's end or outside linebacker. We'll let him play, though, with that 80 overall boosting up our defense a bit. But I like this roster a lot now. I think we got much more complete this season, and there are probably a lot more players that could take over if someone were to get injured. So I feel really good about this roster. Here are the starting lineups, and things look pretty good for us. We still have to upgrade our new first round selection, Jamal Copels, but I don't think that's going to be a big problem. He's our lowest rated offensive line starter. And then on defense, we're even more complete than we were a year ago. We have Arian Wimper still the backup, Gregory Long, or actually they're both going to play. It's a 4-3 defense. We have the rookie Morse now as our starter at left end. And when I moved Franklin to defensive tackle, he became a 78 overall. I think he was like a 71 or something as a defensive end. So now he fits our scheme really well. I think this is a good team. I'm excited about what this year could turn into. But that's it for the offseason. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you all for watching and supporting the channel. Thank you for sticking with the Browns rebuild and leave your feedback down below on what you thought about this offseason. And also let me know what is your preferred experience for going through the season and the playoffs. Do you want to see nothing from the games or less or what is it you'd like? I'll see you all next time. Have a great day.